Right. We, we took the starter off the centurion in Bath the other day because the gearbox in it smashed up because they are incredibly weak. And we've got another starter here that is unknown condition. Very rarely do the motors fail on them. It's nearly always the gearbox inside. So we know this one smashed itself up because to be fair, I had it smashed up when I was starting last time. So we'll take this to bits and we'll show you hopefully how to mend it and what fails in them. And then hopefully we'll be able to take some gears out of two and maybe make one good one because they're about a thousand pound a piece if you can find one and they're getting very hard to find because they keep breaking. Um, I am going to take the gears out of, we've got a new one somewhere, I'm going to take the gears out of that and have them sent away to be made out of stronger stuff um, to try and improve them because they are a bit pants. But we've got to start by splitting the gearbox body away from the motor. So there's a ring of bolts, we'll whip them off and then we'll show you the next step. That's the uh, ring of bolts off, so now we'll see what bits and pieces fall out, if anything. Hmm, so far, can't see any damage, although actually, see how they, they've got hot, the ends of that gear there, that star wheel. It's got blued slightly on the end, so that's got extremely hot, which would suggest it's been jumping. You can also see the tops of this main gear here are all gnarled over. Oh God, look at it, look. You see that how high they were, and then they're flatted off in areas. So, it looks to me like the failure of this starter is actually this gear, and that gear there, which is actually not so common. And in fact, you can see the tops of the teeth all smashed off down there. So, usually what actually fails is the planetary gears. There's three planetary gears. I'll dig some of this knot out. This is nice. There's three, three planetary gears which you can just about see now. One there, one there, one there. Normally, it absolutely destroys them. They're usually the weakest part. But actually, this particular one, they seem to be okay. So, that isn't so bad. Right, now we've dug the worst of the grease and everything out. And the broken bits of uh, star wheel. You can actually see now how this works and the little pantry gears and when you spin it over you see it fires that out and then that locks into the crank on the engine and turns it and the idea is when the engine's turning faster than the starter it'll actually just slip over these guides but what you do find is when an engine backfires even though it turns the other way because this is pushing that hard at the crank it can turn the start the wrong way, which nearly always smashes those planetary gears. But that hasn't happened this time. Um, and it's actually just, I think, just years of torque. There's just been too much for these tiny little gears. Now, you wouldn't believe that that tiny little gear and that one is starting a, a 650 horsepower B12 27 litre engine. It's no surprise, really, that they break. But anyway, we'll put that one aside. We'll get the other one in the vice now, and we'll see what's failed in that one. The only thing I know about this starter here is someone's took the, the output um, flange off. Otherwise, I know nothing else about this one. Now, that top wheel again doesn't look particularly good. But, I think the primary gears are okay. So it looks like to me like it's that gear and the other one again. In fact, you can feel it. If you can feel that's obviously been jumping. <laughs> there we go, we need two of these gears. Look at this burnt out horrible grease. Actually, that feels pretty good. 
Did we try this one out? Huh? Did we, have we tried this one? Ooh, there's, there's a bit of tooth. Good. Need to make sure that all of that's out before we uh, run it up. Else that'll just smash it straight to bits. Yeah, so I'd say this was jumping the same as that other one. So we need two of the same components. What are the chances of that? Well, these shit starters are actually quite high. Right. Well, we'll go and have a look in the, the spares department, see what we've got. I think, though, first, we'll just take this gear out. Thing. There we go. A little bit of a clean. So otherwise in there, the gears all look pretty perfect. Quite happy with that. Think, uh, nothing getting in the way of that. But obviously, oh yeah, look, look at that tooth. Yeah, that is not. Should I hold it instead? That's not been having a good day. It's been having a, a bit of a bad time. So, obviously, this is something we could do with getting remanufactured out of stronger stuff was quite clearly not up to the job. Um, get the one out of this one as well, thanks while we're at it. And obviously the other thing that fails is this this one here, which should Obviously, that's good. There's the motor, there's the keyway, and this is the ratchet system. So, when you're timing the engine, you, you can do like one click of the degree of the crank. There's like a ratchet in there. You don't actually need that for anything other than timing the engine. So, what I do with a lot of a lot of the time to, to make the planter gears last a bit longer is I actually take the gear out of that and flip it over so it doesn't ratchet, which means when the engine backfires on startup, which they often do for no particular reason, it doesn't smash the planetary gears up. It allows the starter to run the motor the other way. Whereas what happens with this, with this ratcheting system, um, it will only allow the starter to go one way. So if the engine backfires, Obviously, it sends all that strain back through the, the planetary gears and everything on the starter against this ratchet and smashes it to pieces. So with the ratchet out of it, it'll actually allow it to spin the motor backwards, which is a lot kinder on all the gear train in the starter. But that actually isn't the problem with this, with these particular starters. This is just wear and tear, and these, these, these gears just aren't, aren't strong enough for the job, basically. So. I'll get this one off now, undo this nut, take that one off, and we'll see what I've got in my spares. Let's see if we can probably fix both of these, which would be quite nice. Right, we've been to the stores and we've found they're not they're not amazing, 
these these teeth actually are, are very sharp so they're not they're not long for the world but they haven't jumped yet so i'm going to use this gear with this face this other gear which to be fair feels okay so i'm going to slot that on there i'm going to extract that put that into that gearbox housing because I'm not sure what's been going on with that gearbox housing. So I'm going to keep its original gearbox housing. I'm literally going to swap the, the two damaged pieces, build that one up, and then found in the stores a secondary uh, gear in phase. This one looks like ass inside there, but I think, again, the gear is actually okay. But I've also found an end spigot because that flange is missing. So we'll put all that on, uh, and then hopefully, We'll have two good starters. We'll put one of the two on on the centre of bar and try it in a bit. With fingers crossed. All oh, this won't be a waste of time. So I'm going to whip that out now. Right. So we've extracted the spare part, the slightly better teeth. I'm going to put it back into this body now, um, and then we can build that start motor up. This is obviously the correct method of reinstalling. So now put this nut back on. And it just holds in place with a little circlet. So I'll bang that on and then we'll put that slither on the front of the starter motor, bolt it all back together. Put some grease back in it as well, it's probably a good idea. But then that one will be finished. Where's my pliers? Special nut that no one's got the proper tools for. Right. for a moment because I'm going to put the replacement. Uh, fitting on here it is keyweighed and they are an absolute nightmare to fit let's see if it goes on first time which i highly doubt normally it knocks the keyway off uh, i think i actually managed to do that first time but i haven't actually got that in the right place typical That's on. So now, just need to put some grease in there and then slap that all together. Found some grease, a bit of fifth wheel grease. Slap some of that in there. That should stop it wearing as fast. Someone will probably mind. Let me put too much grease in it. Well, we'll see. Right. Lovely. One thing I can't stand is his grease. I hate it. I don't really enjoy mechanical, to be honest. It's too dirty for me, but fortunately, I have to do it. I'm going to clean my gloves and I'm going to put those bolts in, do it all up. is isn't very exciting, we'll show you that when it's done. I'm going to fit the flange. Same for you do without gloves. Okay, 
that's the new cog in there. I've put the new replacement drive gear on. So, pop this back on here. Oh, actually, grease. I hate grease. Absolutely hate it. Gets bloody everywhere. Do these ringer bolts up and then fingers crossed that's another one repaired and we're going to slap it on the center room bar and start the old girl up she hasn't ran in cross when did we last have that running not ran for months has it no we haven't ran for five months so we'll see if the old girl's going to play ball last time i tried to start it it had a disagreement with the start motor, so I left it be. And I just hope it doesn't smash this one straight up. Right, I'm going to take the uh, ratchet system off, like I said, because quite often it causes it to, on a backfire and start it, to smash it all up unnecessarily. So to do this is quite easy. Take the top cover off those ringer bolts and then remove this circlet. And then this should lift it off. And then there's a ratchet, you see? So it can only go one way. All I do is flip that over and put it all back together. So if I want to uh, make it ratchet again, it's just a 10 minute job if I needed to time the engine. But like I say, you only really need the ratchet system when timing. And I've found when running sense, that doing this increases the life of the starter motor by about half. So it's well worth doing if you've got one. Right, that's all back together now. So we'll take both with us just in case one doesn't work. Stick this one on the bar and we'll see if it works. So to the other yard. Right, so we're back in the Centurion bar. I'm going to slap the starter motor back on. I'm not going to film all that because it's boring nuts and bolts. And then we'll start it up for the first time in months, fingers crossed. jump pack it because the batteries are a bit weak. That's working as oil pressure. The oil pressure is pretty good. The coolant sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I'm just going to let it warm up for a bit. So 
good. To be fair, she didn't start too bad. Hasn't started for months. Obviously, quite happy with me starter repair as well. That's that's a good thing. Started no problem at all. Little cute little backlights. Registration light. I still need to get Tiff to come and uh, paint the reg on the back there. What a babe. 